Hey everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Sitting here in my warm and cozy uh, greenhouse at 79 degrees. Comfortable. Um, just like to explain to you some of the reasons for what I've done and what I'm doing. But it all comes down to funding. Uh, it all comes down to finances. The reasons for what I do, why did I want a greenhouse so urgently? Well, it's about finances. I had the materials, I got them for some, in summer for free to build this greenhouse. And if those of you who live in this area will know that there's only one grocery store in all of the nearby small towns one and it's all the same grocery store it is the most expensive grocery store in the entire area but it's the only store in all the little towns in the area funny enough um, granted they have extremely good customer service they have a return policy that doubles your money back so I was shocked when I first time I learned about this. I bought some food, took it home, opened the package, and it was bad. Took it back to the store and got twice my money back. And I'm like, this is not what I paid. And they said, oh, no, that's our policy. I was very impressed. So you get the good with the bad. Um, you get what you pay for, I guess, so to say. Um, anyway, though, the problem is that feeding two sometimes three people here at the homestead has put a heavy cut in the finances that I had to do projects you may have noticed a while back uh, before the garden was producing food you may have noticed that I had a, 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 a lull in my projects there was nothing new happening people were getting upset with me it was boring there was this period where there was not much new happening and I had no new materials and everybody was upset with me. Why don't you buy this? Why don't you buy that? Why don't you buy this? Well, I didn't have anything after being married. Um, it was all I could do to provide for my family. Well, then along comes this garden. And the garden is, it was, it was, it died. But the garden was amazing. They cut our food bill in less than half of what we were paying each month, freeing up the finances to do all the new projects you've seen. I finished the plumbing in the, the shed after two years. No, it's been a year, sorry. It's been a year. Somebody mentioned that I started that shed a year ago. And yeah, if, as of I think November a year ago, I started that shed. And so you see that it took me a long time to be able to get that finance properly to finish it. And it was a, quite a hack job on bits and pieces of used materials, but that's what I had. So now we had the garden growing, and we were eating so much out of the garden. It was a relief, and such a huge relief to have all that food available to us. It really helped us so much. So... When, I, when the freeze was coming along and Mark offered to help us build a greenhouse, I mean, knowing that I could save some of the food and continue on, we have lettuce already growing. We have peppers already growing. We have tomatoes that are already alive somewhere in here. We have herbs and spices and stuff. Well, herbs, I guess you call them. Already growing. We have medicinal plants, aloe vera, already growing. And lemongrass that's a huge thing for melanie the lemongrass we we eat a lot of rice dishes and uh that's a big thing chili peppers huge with rice dishes we've got chilies and faced with the impending doom of the garden and um an offer of building a greenhouse for free i decided to rush this through and get it done now I have, I figure, a good two to three weeks before I have to stress anymore, uh, weather-wise. The nights are not very much below freezing, and the days are above freezing for the rest of November, it looks like. It could change. 
but for the majority on the average that's how it's going to be for the rest of November and I was able to save a lot of plants here these are edible um, violets are our food they're a source of vitamins and minerals so we can add these to our garden salads and yeah I went with a greenhouse put that first the shed is up and it is standing and it has prevented our water from freezing just the residual heat I open the there's a blanket over the door same as here I open the blanket by day the solar heater pumps heat in there throughout the day just pumps that heat in there and then at night I close that blanket and it's not freezing even though it freezes outside it's not freezing in the, the shed so I've been able to put that off and continue on over here on this stuff the animals by the way all have fresh bedding and straw uh, a lot of people are worried about the animals the chickens are all going into bed at night and they all fit comfortably inside the chicken coops I have distributed some of the birds evenly we have one two three four five chicken coops for thirty birds now everybody that does farming knows that five chicken coops for thirty birds is plenty at least from any study I've ever, I've ever seen that's plenty um, we have and don't forget some of those are bantams and they're in the smaller um, chicken coop so the birds are all going in at night and they have all fresh bedding so they're comfortable the goats have fresh straw uh, Chris just mucked out the entire entire goat run for us the other day which is great fertilizer for gardening for next year that isn't a compost bin and that'll break down for us to use next year and we have been stocking straw for them for a bed we're also going to build them a raised bed in the back corner of the shed and don't forget one wall of that shed is heavily insulated with eight 12 feet of wood between the goats and the outdoor world so that's all very very well sealed off that back wall I plan on snipping a couple pieces of tin and putting it up on the the two side walls here hopefully even today I, I've, I've been wanting to do it every day but the days are flying by so fast and it gets dark so early that um, our days are short but for now all of our animals are comfortable the goats they smile they're so happy when you walk up to them they're smiling you can tell they're happy their tail wags when, they, when you talk to them they're really really happy animals and by the way um, uh, my mom when she was reading the comments she talked to me and says well animals usually live in barns on a farm and you can see through the slats in the barns and nobody has a fit about that the animals are just fine you know you can see light through the slats of the the walls in the barn but yet the animals are fine our goats have it just about the same but I'm still gonna seal that off just just for a little bit nicer for them and then give them a raised bed which by the way no animal on any farm has a raised bed but we're gonna build them a raised bed platform with a little bit of a wall on it to keep the straw from coming off and that'll give them a nicer cleaner area I want that for for it was my idea in order to keep them cleaner because I don't want the goats laying on the dirty ground um, in the winter it's going to get sloppy out there once the snow starts to fall and starts to stay I don't want the goats to be getting dirty so I want them in a nice comfortable raised platform just taking extra precautions and uh, like I said we've had warm days and cold nights so right now um, we got a little bit of time left now the greenhouse has this tank in here I'm gonna fill it up the rest of the way with water and that'll be a thermal mass so right now though you can tell that the water in the tank is warmer uh, colder colder than the air because it's sweating heavily it's really sweating right now profusely out here so we've gotta we've gotta fix that I just noticed there's a sag on the pallet it's on in one spot the pallet sags in one spot so I'm gonna have to put a jack under there and lever that up that's funny I did not foresee that happening hmm. the pallet wasn't very strong there's a weak point in the in the frame of the bottom of the pallet so it sort of sags a little I'll have to fix that 
But, other than that, it's looking good in here. I'll keep an eye on things. Wouldn't that be funny if the pallet collapsed? They're supposed to hold a couple thousand pounds, and the tank is about 2,000 pounds when full. Should be fine. Now, the um, there's a lot of talk about if I'm going to heat this place, if I'm going to collect rainwater, um, if I'm going to insulate the ceiling. Well, we're tapped out for this paycheck. I did all I could with this paycheck. I'm going to finish insulating the ceiling next paycheck. And again, like I said, for now, we're making it. We're keeping the plants above freezing by night. And they're warm in the day. And we have blooming flowers, which I think is a positive sign. We have growing peas, which is a good thing. Uh, the tomatoes won't do much until it gets warmer and stays warmer. So that's a, that, that, that'll be an issue, but they're not going to die. Same with the chilies, I think. Um, the herbs are doing fine, and the lettuce will be fine. And the little uh, violets. So, yes, I'm collecting rainwater for the greenhouse. Um, yes, somehow I'm going to have the tanks stored inside. I'm not yet sure because one tank takes up a lot of space. So, although there will be a lot of evaporation and, and usage, I'm not sure how I'm going to um, organize my water usage out here. But, but there will be a lot of water used in the plants and in the aquaponic system. But there will also be a lot of loss to the environment. So, i got to figure out where I'm going to have the rainwater tank for now. Right now it's outside until we get really bad freezing temperatures. Yes, I'm going to heat the shed with the wood stove, but it's a um, 1890, it was made in 1890, and it's a water boiler. So it's got a water jacket and then a wood burning chamber inside the water jacket. And you're literally burning the fire inside a water container, a water pot. It says no hot pot. It's a two, I don't know why it says no hot pot, but that's, that's the name right on it, no hot pot. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a cast iron pot inside a cast iron pot, literally, and the water flows between the two. That is a super, super efficient water boiler, because that's what it's made to do. I'm looking at it, it's right under the camera. I, I thought about putting it in the corner, but then it's going to take up that entire four foot square section of greenhouse if it's inside because you have to have clearance to the walls and you can't do anything above it obviously but if I put it outside with a roof over it in sort of a little shelter I could build it an outside um, shelter to keep the weather off of it and more rainwater collection then the water with antifreeze obviously is pumped into the greenhouse into some 55 gallon drums that I have here that's why you may have seen three 55 gallon drums in here I'm considering using four of those drums with a half of a uh, IBC tote the uh, 275 gallon tank on top as a aquaponics grow bed so the stove will heat the water and that's um, what 220 gallons of water the stove will heat the water the water will radiate the heat all night long back into the greenhouse and we should have comfortable temperatures in the winter nights then on days when the sun is shining we'll have the solar heater the passive solar heater which I picked up in Michigan from a uh, house demolition job will be hooked up to the greenhouse and then on cloudy days I'll have to run the wood stove but it's not going to be continuous burning um, You don't want to run that continuous on when boiling the water because you'll boil the water. You'll, you'll actually make it too hot in here. So once you get that water hot, you damp it right on down really low and uh, let the system just uh, sort of phase out. And every once in a while, add some more wood in it just to keep the water warm. So I think I have that um, pretty much taken care of, the plan for that. Again, I'll have to wait till next paycheck to finish the the heating system because I've got to buy a lot of fittings and adapters and um, although they're only like a dollar, two dollars, five, six, seven, eight dollars a piece doesn't sound like much per piece but when you're going to hook up two to four tanks and plumb it outside and all that it all adds up it adds up fast somehow 
I'm looking at the black pipe on it right now. Stuff adds up. Um, a lot of talk about the mulch I threw on on the ground. It was dusty in here. It was dry and dusty, and I had serious problems breathing at night in the house. Um, mulch I have is wood chips. This is not dusty. It's all been run through a uh, wood chipper. All right. There's bigger particles. There's smaller particles, but it's it's wood. It's not dusty. Actually, it's very wet. It's partially decomposed. Uh, the only concern I have is possibly mold, but um, it smells nice and sweet. A lot of it is cedar, and it's already, the surface of it is starting to dry a little, and it's starting to turn a nice, beautiful color, like mold should look, and there's no more dust. I noticed already, already, in the first day after that I did it, I noticed the difference in here. There's the... Everything was filthy. I showed you that on the wood stove. Now, it's not anymore. The dust is starting to filter out through the gaps in, in the greenhouse and out the doors. I have it open all the time. And it's no longer so filthy. So, the, the plants that we just brought in are clean. The plants that we had brought in, we have to wash. And I'm working at it, and they're staying clean. So, that was a benefit. I know people thought, I don't know what people thought, that I brought in leaves or something, but, um, no, it's mulch, it's, it's, uh, wood, pieces of wood, pieces of tree, like you would mulch your pathways, so I don't think people quite realize what I meant when I said I was bringing in mulch. Anyway, that's all, it's, uh, sweet smelling, most of it is cedar, so, and that's temporary. I will be covering the floor of the greenhouse with gravel, but again, that's in the future, as finances permit. So um, that is not happening anytime soon, and I needed to get that dirt down for the plants as well as me. So I've got a lot planned before the snow falls. Uh, we are going to reinforce the goat pen. We are going to build a bigger chicken coop, although the chickens are all good. I do plan to eventually extend the chicken run around the entire perimeter of the meadow, which um, will help a lot with lowering the feed cost because to give them more free range area. And I want to have a bigger, nicer chicken coop so that I can, well, it'll ease our egg gathering. I want to have multiple egg laying batteries because now that all the chickens are sleeping indoors, uh, by the way, chickens sleep outdoors in summer. Even in the rain, I've seen them sleeping outdoors. Um, if they have the, the ability, they'll go up in a tree. Chickens are birds. They're birds. If you leave them free and don't cut their wings, they're going to nest in the trees, just like the turkeys do. Um, the turkeys we have here, uh, until we pen them up solidly, they prefer to be up on the top of that fence, that crossbar and that fence on our gate every night no matter what the weather, no matter what the temperature, those turkeys wanted to be up there to roost. And that's their preference. Actually, there was a tree behind the uh, goat pen that some of the turkeys were sleeping in. Chickens and turkeys want to sleep in the trees. That's their nature. They come from the jungle. They want to sleep in the trees. Um, so, most of them slept on top of the chicken coops, on top of the fencing, on top of whatever they could. Now that it's colder, they're jamming up inside the chicken coop. Yes, they all fit. Chris thought they were all gone one night. He was like, oh, where are the chickens? And they were all inside. They fit. All right. But because the chickens are using the coops now more than just for egg laying, our egg production has reduced, which makes sense. So we're going to build more chicken coops for that. And because um, keeping water for animals in winter is a nightmare. It freezes all the time. It freezes all day, it freezes all night. I am thinking that since chickens are warm-blooded animals, chickens emit heat, body heat, I'm thinking about having a well-insulated chicken coop with a solar heater by day, passive solar heater by day, really simple, just to keep warmth inside that chicken coop. The water supply will be in the chicken coop. And by night, the heat of the birds in the chicken coop will keep it above freezing. That's my theory. I think it'll work. We'll put that to the test. 
Um, same with the goat water. I want to build an insulated box around that. And I want to have a passive solar heater on that by day and by night. Yeah. See if it stops it from freezing. Um, somebody said you can't stop something from freezing without heat in the winter. And yes, you're right. But with heat, you might be able to do it. So those are some of the projects. And today I hope to get working on that shed. Um, I've got the damper for the wood stove. I'm going to put that in and finish that project. And I've got the foam insulation for the ceiling. And I'm going to put the blocking up in the back. And that'll help eliminate a lot of the heat loss in that shed. And on a really cold night, I won't have to stress at all about draining the water tank. Uh, we have been draining the, the water heater at night. I pull the plug, open the shower valve, the shower hot water on high. It lets the water flow out. Gravity pressure pushes right on through. And uh, then I keep, keep a candle under it on a really, really cold nights. But it's been about 40... I think the lowest I saw it was 39 degrees one night. The lowest I've seen it in that shed was 39 degrees on a 27 degree night. I think the heat from the house is heating the shed. So that helps a lot. Also, I'm going to put a hole in the wall of the bathroom and put a 120 millimeter fan, which I have, and have that blowing warm air into the shed 24-7, just always on. And that'll help a lot um, and reduce the amount of heating I have to do with the wood stove. Plus, the passive solar heater. So I think I've got everything planned, but there is a lot of work. Oh yeah, siding on the house and the greenhouse. Um, within the next couple weeks I want to do it. I can even do the siding when it's snowing, but I plan on doing it this year. I want to get that siding done on the house and the greenhouse both. It is all going to be pallet wood. The greenhouse is going to be in a horizontal pattern using whole boards. And the house is going to be the, um, the uh, shake style pallet wood siding that I started because I really like it and it's holding up well. So I think that covers everything. It's a lot. I've got no time. I've got a lot to do it. A lot to do and no time. But I hope to get it done. So that's that's my priorities. That's the methods to my madness. That's my reasoning behind everything. Now I'm going to get this video up to you guys and hopefully some of you will stop ripping your own hair out and beating on your monitor because those things cost money and some people can't afford to rip their hair out. So I hope to stop that. I'm going to get this video up. Hope this helps. Talk to you later, guys. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project.